friends, I'm Nadine Brandis, the author of Fox, Romanov, and the Out of Time series, and today I wanted to talk about getting into the writing zone. NaNoWriMo is upon us. If you don't know what NaNoWriMo is, that stands for National Novel Writing Month. And that month is November, and a lot of authors decide, hmm, I'm not crazy enough, so I want to drive myself even more crazy by trying to write 50,000 words in a single month. Why do we do this to ourselves? Why? It's just torture. But it's torture with a giant community that's torturing themselves as well, and so for some reason that gives us motivation. My history with NaNoWriMo is not exactly the best. I try to do it every year because I get super motivated and super inspired to write. I have never actually written the full 50,000 words in one month. I'm a slow writer. I can't write every day. I'm also not a plotter. All the things that make NaNoWriMo easier, being a plotter, being a fast writer, being able to write every day, I don't have any of those. So yeah. However, I am an author. I do write books. They've gone on to be published. So I wanted to share some of my tips and tricks to you guys on how I get into the writing zone. I'm doing this video now because I know that a lot of you guys are prepping for NaNoWriMo and I figured this is kind of good timing. This is also for anybody who is trying to create a consistent writing rhythm or anybody who's just wanting to write as their profession, writing to get published. Keep in mind, these are all tips that work with me. Every writer is different, so some of these may not work for you, but a lot of the writing process is similar similar across the board, so hopefully you will find some tip in here that will actually help you get into the writing zone when you sit down to work on your manuscript. So you really want to start by figuring out what your limitations are. Learn how and when you best focus. This is so important. Can you write in big chunks or do you write in little 15 minute chunks? Can you write every single day or do you need to take breaks? It's so important to know what you can handle and what you can't so that you can recharge your creative tank and then pour that back out into your novel. Personally, I like to write in big chunks. I like to take four or five hours and focus on writing. I can only write about three days a week before I need to recharge. So usually I'll write two days in a row, take a break, write another day, and then I'll use my fifth work day for marketing and things like that, take the weekend off, and the cycle starts again. I understand my limitations. I understand that I can't write every day because I will burn out you guys. But understanding your limitations also means understanding where you're at in life. So when I was in college, I hardly got to write at all. I was so busy with classes that it was really hard to make a consistent writing time. So if you're in college or if you're in school or if you're working like a really demanding job, understand that it's okay if it takes you a little bit longer to get into the zone or if you can only do small chunks here and there. You have to understand your limitations. And sometimes this can take months or even years. And then after you've figured yourself out, guess what? You change because we all grow and we change and we mature and we learn things. And so then you may have to just keep studying yourself and keep figuring out when you best focus. Your writing sessions can be whatever you can fit in. And no matter how much or little that is, if you sit down and you write or you brainstorm, that's a success. So it's important to study your habits and keep track of when you thrive and when you don't. Along those same lines, my next tip is to get rid of distractions. Distractions might mean something different to you than it means to me. For me, I have to turn off the internet and make sure that nothing else is demanding my time for at least a couple hours. I have a really hard time doing like, I'm just gonna write for 15 minutes. Uh, that's. How do you get into the zone to write for 15 minutes? But I know somebody who does that and she just writes for 15 minutes a day on her phone and eventually ends up with giant tomes that are brilliantly written. That's not me. So get rid of distractions. I turn off the internet. I make sure that I'm someplace where I'm not going to get interrupted. For other people, this might mean just putting on headphones to drown out the world. It comes back to knowing how you focus. What's going to distract you? What won't? If you know that about yourself, then you know how to address those problems. My next tip is to set the stage. Prepare your writing space. Guys, this is where you're going to be creative. You're going to create worlds in this space. How cool is that? I am a huge fan of atmosphere. Atmosphere is everything. If I wasn't a writer, I'd be someone who like 
throws parties with really awesome decorations and atmosphere and all of that, but as an introvert. Atmosphere is the stage for inspiration. So when I'm sitting down to write, I'll usually light a candle. I have a different candle that I use with each different book that I'm writing so that the smell actually makes me think, okay, I'm writing on Fox today. I'm writing on Romanov today. This is what that book smells like. That's part of setting the stage for me. If I'm feeling in a mood to write to music, then I'll put on my playlist. I usually have a playlist for every single different book. I'll make myself a gigantic cup of tea. And usually I'll try to clean my writing space. Maybe this isn't for you. For me, if I have a clean writing space, it just invites me in to be creative. That place is just this perfect invitation to come and write. Or if my writing room is so messy that I, it's gonna take me a million years to clean off my desk, then I will go to the coffee shop because those people clean off their tables and I don't even have to pay them to do that. Or if I'm writing in bed or on the couch, I'll make sure that that's kind of clean and I'll clean off the little table next to it so I can put my tea there and my candle. Atmosphere, atmosphere, atmosphere. Set the stage. Something else that I do is that I pray over my writing sessions. So faith is a huge, huge part of my creative process. It's a huge part of my life. I just, I love Jesus and he's a huge part in me writing stories and just the process of that. So I start every writing session by praying over the book that I'm writing and just praying for the words and praying for the guidance and the stamina and all of the things that I need for writing. And for me, it completely transforms my ability to write and to enter into the writing zone. So if faith is something that is important to you and that's part of your life, I really encourage you to use that with your writing because it will encourage more inspiration. So that's another part of setting the stage for me. Okay, so getting in the writing zone, we've done some self-examination, we've done the whole set the stage. Let's look at the mental side and remember why you write. This is so important going into writing with the correct mindset. We can easily get distracted by thoughts of what if my words aren't good enough? What if I can't write? What if I don't know enough? What if I'm never going to get published? What if an agent hates it? Stop. Don't start there. And that can totally derail your ability to keep writing. Remind yourself before every session why you write. If it's because you love stories, remember that. If it's because you're passionate about a cause, remind yourself of that cause. If it's because you process in words and you just love the idea of entering into another world, think on that. It's so important to remember the core reason, what inspired you to become a writer, not thinking of the doubts that come in about the future of your writing. Think about writing now, think about why you love it, why you even want to do it, and let that empower you. Remembering why will help dispel the nerves and the fears and help you get into the zone. So if you put all of these points together, you will realize a common theme, and that is rhythm that it's starting to create a rhythm that gets you into writing. And then when you continue doing this rhythm and studying yourself and kind of have a consistent way of getting into the writing zone, it trains your brain so that every time you sit down to write, when you do these specific things, it's preparing you to be creative. And then it gets easier and easier to enter into the writing zone. For me, if I journal and I make a cup of tea and I go into my writing space, my brain's like, okay, it's go time. It's writing time. I will be creative. Here's some quick fire tips on just getting the words down. I don't know about you, but when I sit down and I have like a blank screen or a blank page, that can be really intimidating and I don't really know where to start and that can make it really hard. One tip is to read through the previous couple of pages that you wrote before the section that you're going to write. Sometimes just reading some of the past scenes will get you right back into the momentum of your story and you can just start writing where you left off. Number two, when you finish a writing session, end the scene somewhere that's really interesting so that the next time that you sit down to write, there's something fun to write. You're gonna finish the fight scene. You're gonna conclude the action scene. If you tie everything up and then kind of call that an end to the day, then the next time that you come to sit down, it's like, well, now what? And that does make it a little bit harder. Sometimes this works for me, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I would just rather finish the scene. But if you can manage to stop mid scene and know exactly where you're going, then the next time you come and sit down, that will help. Number three, if you're really having a hard time getting the words going, 
pull up a Pinterest board if you've made some or pull up some sort of art piece that inspires you or some sort of visual and just start writing descriptions for your story. Descriptions of scenes, descriptions of characters, descriptions of emotions. Even if it doesn't belong in that place in your story where you're at right now, you'll have these great descriptions that you can use later and it will also just get the words flowing so that then eventually you can jump into the story and start writing there. Lastly, write a little outline of where you're going with the scene. You can either do this the night before or you can do it the minute that you sit down, but I like to do just like a little bullet point like, okay, I'm going here, they have to kiss, romantic interaction, attack, or something like that. And then I at least know I've got to get to this point and that does help jumpstart my words. Even if you're a pantser and you're not a plotter, which I'm more on the pantsing side of things than the plotting side of things, this will still help get your words going for your writing session. Okay, the last thought that I want to leave you guys with is that some days our brains just aren't feeling like being creative. And that's okay. You could do all of the things that I just suggested and sit down and just nothing comes. This happens. This happens to me. This happens to every author. That is not failure. Sometimes your creative juices just aren't ready to work. And when that's the case, it's okay to decide not to write that day. Sometimes you do need to force yourself through and the words are gonna be terrible and you're gonna hate them, but you can come back and fix them another day. But it's also okay to just call it a day and go do something else that inspires you. Go read a favorite book, go watch a favorite movie, go on a walk in nature, put together a Pinterest board. It's okay if you have an off day writing because that happens to everyone. I hope that this was helpful for everybody who's writing, whether you're doing NaNoWriMo or not. Let me know down in the comments which tip you think is going to be the most helpful for you or if there's a tip that I missed that you have found really helpful. I would love to know any of your tips. I love trying new things to get myself in the writing zone so please comment below and share. And just to remind you guys, my book Romanov is up for pre-order. It releases May 2019. I'm so so excited for you guys to read this historical fantasy retelling of Anastasia. I had a blast writing it. It wasn't always easy but I just love the story you guys so if you want to check that out links are down below and as always if you want to keep up on my videos where I talk writing and publishing and all of the bookish things please click subscribe or the little bell icon that gives you an email alert whenever I post a new video so with that happy writing happy nanoing and tally ho